I was at a concert in Grant Park with Jim and Valerie Voss. Val and Jim shared many challenges and health issues they had experienced. She said Tom Rook was their go-to minister at church. They turned to me and asked, well, who's, who's your go-to minister, Stanley? I was dumbfounded. I said, well, what, what do you mean? They said, well, you know, who do you go to when you're having a crisis or a major issue? I said, well, if I'm having a crisis or a major issue, I go to Richard, the houseman. Never occurred to me to go to a minister, to go to a minister about anything. It's not so much a trust issue. It's just that when you're having a crisis, you need to find someone who's capable and get the job done. Welcome. Welcome to Sunday Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith at Sunday Coffee Hour. We talk about everything and nothing. This Sunday, we talked about being radioactive, John B. Anderson, playing Mozart, and finding a good art store. The readings at Washington National Cathedral were from Acts about the casting lots for a new disciple. And from John, being in the world, but not of it. You can't be ill-considered when you're not considered in the first place. The gospel reading was about the solemnity of the Ascension. At Washington National Cathedral, the sermon was by Jan Cope. Jan asked us if this was our last day on earth, how would we live our lives? She said most of us would probably be concerned with those we're leaving behind. Christ is concerned with those left behind and for those who are yet to come. He entrusts his ministry to you and to me, not to the religious community. He entrusts us to God, and God asks us to love one another. There's a difference between being glad you're not dead and being glad you're alive. If we only had one more day to live, we'd probably experience a lot of gratitude between the two. At St. James, the sermon was by Frank Donahue. Mr. Donahue asked how we're different six weeks after Easter. He asked, where, where have we seen Christ? It's like seeing someone we know in the crowd. We must pursue him. What are we going to say once we catch up to him? God makes something out of a babble people and out of the clay of the earth, and he makes something out of us. We are, we're catching up to Christ, and we worry about what, what to say. But there is no need to worry, because our innate desire to catch, up, to catch up with him says it all. We don't need to figure it out or have someone explain it to us. There is no intermediary between us and Christ, because Christ is the intermediary. It's God himself. At Trinity Lutheran Church in Rockville, Illinois, the sermon was by Pastor Jay. Jay preached about how we're not defined by all the crap. Things happen, things that we can tackle, and things we need to hand over to God. We can make our bed, do the dishes, and take out the trash. These are things that need to be done, and we're on it. But just about everything else, we probably need to hand over to God. He's our go-to person. We've limited our scope to make most things a thing, a thing we can control, our relationships, our politics, even the climate. There's no God in that and very little joy. Somewhere between the things we can control and things we can't is a lot of gratitude waiting to be discovered. I heard five different sermons on Sunday. They were all variations of the white noise of the party line, sprinkled with breakthrough moments of insight. It's not entirely unlike the way we live our lives, doing the laundry while contemplating the issues of the world. We go to church to be reassured and to hear the word well presented. Often it's not what is said, but the way it's said and presented. In some churches, God has been replaced with a social justice program. It sounds good, but we'll sort, sort it all out later while we're doing the laundry. 
will sift out the transgender, the racism, and the abortion topics. We've always had accommodation in this country, but none of us want to be defined by these issues. God doesn't want us to be defined by these issues either. At Trinity, it occurred to me that everyone has a story, a story to tell. The format of a testimonial would probably be very, very compelling. I'd like to hear all these stories, but there is very little room for hearing people's stories with all the white noise of the party line. Christ didn't leave his ministry to the religious community. He left it to the disciples, to you and to me. As Pentecost approaches, we're reminded that everyone heard the Spirit in his own way. It comes to us, and then we come together. We don't come together first to hear the same voice with a predetermined message. In my family, we had distant, distant relatives, farm people really, who were Christian scientists. Nobody knew what they believed because they didn't really believe in things. They have a faith in God, and that suffices. We often make faith into a thing, like the Bible, like the resurrection, and like communion or even baptism. We often start with a thing and then reverse engineer a meaning. Often it's packaged as morality. God doesn't need us to initiate a new effect of morality because he is the effect. When Jackie Kennedy found herself wandering around in Central Park disoriented, she was afraid she was developing dementia. She was relieved later to learn she had brain cancer. If Shakespeare was writing the story of her life, losing her mind would be the ideal story plot. Having brain cancer implies you have a brain. It's preferable to the tragedy of losing your mind. It's like knowing which fork to pick up at the dinner party. It's the classiest thing to do. In my short life, I thought we were having a conversation, but it's only a conversation as long as you're going along and agreeing with everything. For the most part, that's, that's what I was doing. And the rest of the time, I was kind of putting on a comedy routine. We're all searching for the ultimate punchline. Christ is the least significant of God's miracles. We've made him, made him into something to eclipse the miracle of our daily living. Christ didn't come so others could tell us how to live our lives, but that's what people do when they make Christ into the ultimate miracle and then bang us over the head with it. We can look at the miracle of our daily living and see, see Christ there. He's already there ahead of us. That's what Elam Davies said, doing the work for us. Jesus didn't come so someone else could tell us how to live our lives. And he didn't come so you can tell someone else how to live theirs. Being Christian isn't a litmus test. It's not a thing. It's a state of being, a faith, and life itself. If you would like to join us at Sunday Coffee Hour, Sunday Coffee Hour is every Sunday at 12 noon Central Time on Zoom. I will include my email in the description of this video. I'd be happy to send you an invitation. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.